Hi, this is David Parrish again, uh, bringing you part two of our video blog about the principles, the seven big principles, or the seven stages, or the seven steps of disciple-making movements. Uh, we've got a great disciple-making movement project happening in Honduras. Uh, we're also involved in Southern Africa. We're also involved in, in uh, Asia. And uh, talking about the question of these great disciple-making, church-planting, multiplying movements, what are the principles? Because what we want to find out is, will those principles work everywhere, and, and will they work in the United States? And the answer is yes, but what are they? What are the seven principles? So last week we started with principle number one, or step one, or stage one, and we called it a kingdom mindset. We have to have our minds, our mo really this is about motives. The motives of our heart has to be, if we're really going to see CPM or disciple-making movements happen, our motives have to be uh, to see the kingdom of God multiply, not our own ministry multiply, not not our church, our denomination, our organization, whatever. It's not about those things. It's about Jesus. It's about his kingdom. It's about making disciples to Jesus. And that has to be the motive of our heart. That has to be our mindset. That has to be what we're after. Why? Why does that have to be the way it is? Because if that's not our mindset, <laughs> uh, well, if we succeed, we won't be happy with the result because it won't be building our kingdom. It'll be building his kingdom. And so that's what we need to be about at the beginning. What is the second principle? Principle number two, here it is. I'm going to say it this way, and then in the next video blog, I'm going to come back next week and unpack it a little bit. Principle number two is this. It's a God thing. Let me say that again. It's a God thing. Disciple-making movements, they are God's work. There, only God can cause a movement to happen anywhere in the world, here or anywhere else. I remember before we got started with our uh, church planning movement project in Honduras, our mentor, the person that trained us, was uh, a, a man named David Watson. And he, he, he poured into our life, taught us the principles, told us about what was happening in different places of the world, taught us these principles. And, and uh, so one day, just after we had first sent the missionaries to Honduras, we're just getting ready to get started. We hadn't even, we hadn't even begun to train anybody in Honduras yet. And I was with uh, Brother David Watson, and I said something like this, we're getting ready to launch a church planning movement. And he looked at me and he said, no, you're not. And it stunned me. I said, what do you mean, no, I'm not? He said, you're not going to launch a church planning movement. He said, if God doesn't birth a church planning movement in Honduras, there will never be one. Let me tell you something. That stuck on the inside of me. And I got a hold of this principle. Church planning movements, disciple making movements are the work of God. Only God can birth a church planning movement. Only God and his power can create a disciple making movement. Now, does that mean we don't have anything to do? Absolutely not. Does that mean we just kind of sit around and say, well, then God, if you want to do it, you'll do it. I'm glad it's happening here. And I guess if God wants it to happen, it'll happen. Absolutely not. No, that's one ditch. You see, on one side of the error on this kind of thinking is the idea that it's all God's work and we don't have to do anything. The other end is the one that sometimes we get into, and that is, it's all our work. It's up to us. If it's to be, it's up to me. It, and we create our programs and our designs, and we, we get our budgets, and we draw out our plans. I remember hearing Neil Cole say this. Before he would train church planners a few years ago, he would make them draw out a plan. He would make them draw out an in-depth plan plan, a strategic plan of how they were going to go into an area and plan a church, how they were going to reach people. And he said he had one guy write out this plan. It was thick. It was a big, thick plan. The guy brought it in his office and put it on his desk. He had done what he had been assigned to do. He had developed the plan. And, and Neil Cole picked it up and looked at it and said, oh, that's great, and then pitched it in the garbage can. <laughs> because, you see, he had to make a plan. He had to take a step, but he had to know it'll never work out just the way you plan it because it's not our work. It's God's work. Now, if we can get these principles together, that we have to intentionally plan and work and step out and move forward and take action, but if anything's going to happen, it's going to be the hand of God. How do we connect to that? What, what are the practical ways that we connect to the work of God in, in joining with him in what he's doing in disciple-making movements? How do we connect? How does man in his obedience connect to God and his sovereignty in a practical way, well, how's it happening in church planning movements, in disciple-making movements? The practical answer to that is the subject of next week's video blog. Thanks for watching.